everyone. Mary and Espresso Press Design. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for stopping by. Sorry I'm late. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. And that's you. Busy week. What can I say? School started yesterday and I wasn't any more ready for that than my daughter was, I'm sure. But um, today we're going to do <clears throat> off, the off, off the Charms for a video or two. Um, and a little show and tell and then we'll get right into it. <clears throat> today we're going to do Marker Batik. Batik. Marker Batik. So just a quick little show and tell here. I don't know if you're going to see that glitter or not, but that's another framed piece I did. And that's the last one for that. A little more rustic. Um, put the word smile in there. I don't know about that part. I usually don't do that kind of stuff, but I did this time. So there's that. And this little uh, tea treat holder I made. Tea treat with a butterfly collection. Uh, papers and um, the digital kit. So that's that in in print if you want to see something actually made with it. Okay, this is kind of cool. I have some charms here, but I some new little charms here, but I decided not to do that today because this will be faster. But you're going to need um, markers, as you can see. I've been, I have tons of markers. You're going to need some alcohol. Doesn't matter what, what strength. You're going to need some water. You're going to need a stencil. And you're going to need some white paper. So I'm just going to show you step one, or if you just want to get some nice tinted papers here without dealing with spray alcohols and all of that, which is what I had been doing. Um, I don't know where it is at the moment, but I've been tearing apart markers to... Um, make my own alcohol inks. And then I found this and I realized I don't even have to do that because I can get all the color paper I want by eliminating the step of tearing apart markers. <coughs> so, came up with this. <coughs> so, I'm just going to do step one. And this is um, Marker Batik. There's the front and there's the back. So I'm just going to do step one. This one's already dried and I can show you step two. So, <clears throat> it's going to be better if you um, stick with color families, warm colors or cool colors, because, now this isn't bad, I'm not saying it's bad, but in the end you're going to start getting muddy if you go mixing warm and cool. Okay, so it's better if you stick with either warm this I started with yellows, 
And then I moved on to pinks and reds. Here's the back. Both sides are nice. <clears throat> and this one I started with um, greens. And I'm going to move on to blues. After I show you the, the um, just how to do, well, I don't even have to do that. You'll get the gist after I put on the ink. Okay, so I'm just going to move on to my blues because all I really have to say is, and you need a, a clear file folder, insert, a clear sheet doesn't even matter what it is. You could probably do this on wax paper. So I'm just going to add a bunch of blues here. Well, no, okay. I have to do it. I have to do the first part so you can see the stencil part. Duh. Okay. I'll do it twice. Just won't dry it. And it doesn't matter how you put these on. If you want to keep going in circles, get a different design in there a little bit. Kind of like this one. I just went in lines, brown and green. Whatever you want. Okay. So I'm going to be doing blues. I'll, I'll do a starter one and I'll go from blue to green. And it's probably better if you go from light to dark. That one has not worked too well. Better if you go from light to dark. That's why I started with the yellows on the other one. Okay, that's probably enough. <clears throat> now you're going to want this to be soaked. Okay. And you're going to take your stencil. You're going to lay it on there. You're going to take your sheet of paper. Okay, now for this, this step, you can start out, re leave the stencil out, make your first color as a solid, and that way you don't get, and then when you do the second part, your first part will be the white, okay? That makes sense. You can do this. You can start out with coffee, coffee dye, and then add color. Whatever you want. You can add a second stencil after the first, and have two stencils for your second color if you want, and then keep building up layers. Okay. There's your first layer. I'm just going to pick this up and pick up some more color to get the edges. And there's the back. The back is Back is the opposite of the front. Of course it is, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the pattern is reversed. So, kind of always remember that when you do your second color, which I'm going to put my um, the 
what I'm going to put face down on the next one is this side. Okay. Okay, so there's step one, <clears throat> which as it's dried is like this. Okay. So I'm not going to dry that and go it and go back into the green with this one. Just going to do the opposite and go into the blue with this one. So I hope you can understand the layering. <clears throat> it helps if you know a little bit about batik. You still have to keep in mind your color families. Otherwise you'll end up with mud. Okay, and you can do it monochromatic. <clears throat> you can start with light greens and go to dark greens. But as long as you stay in the same family, warm and cool, you're good. Okay, so I'm going to put down another layer of blue. And I'm probably going to try to make it as dark as I can. That should probably be a little drier. I'm going to try to make it as dark as I can so you can <clears throat> get the full effect here. I have a whole bunch of blues. <clears throat> get one that works really good. That doesn't work too well. That's not working too well this time either. Um, let me see. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going in with blue. And I can even add some bluish purples. There's a different blue. So I hope you're all doing well. And hey, you, L, my friend L from West Virginia. How about that guy, Oliver Anthony, turning down an eight million dollar contract? Good for him. Good for him. What did I say? Good for him. But I hope that I hope that gives you a real feeling of being proud of your your neighbor. I've hardly watched anything this week, so this was this was the only thing I this was the only thing I saw that brightened my week. Learning that I don't have to make um, spend all this time doing um <laughs> cutting up dried up markers. Oh, let's see. I wish I had a super dark, but I don't. Well, that's going to do. Okay, step two. I have my green that's already dried. And I'm going to go in with my blue. And you're going to see, okay, it's going to make things muted. Because you're layering this. Remember, that's my stencil side, and that's the reverse of my stencil side. So you're going to see it's just going to make some things darker. my 
in reverse. But I'm just basically trying to get the white out of there. And there's my batik side. And anywhere I don't want white, I'm just going to go in here and pick up the rest of this stuff. Let her dry. But if I wanted to, I could have put a different stencil on there and then add another color. Okay, <clears throat> let me try to explain this. I could have started with yellow as my stencil layer and then I could have went to orange and added another stencil and then I could have went to pink red for my final this one and then I would have two two different stencil layers and three different colors so I hope you can understand that. But this is a great way to either just color paper. You don't need to buy those alcohol inks. Not even necessary. Who isn't sitting around with 28 million markers? <laughs> don't give them away. Don't give them away anymore, just like with my crayons. Although I did find a did find another bag of crayons, and I do have some more to show you about using crayons. But um, this is just the marker part. So there you go, petite marker. And when that dries. It's going to be a little look. And there's step two. If you still like, if you'd like to keep the white in there, you can use that for your stamping part. And it will, um, like you stamp some words in there, some uh, cursive, stamp over that. It's going to show up on your white. And there you go. And there's your batik. <clears throat> and of course, if you don't want to even do the stencil, there's your beautiful paper. I got a bunch of it here. Okay. That I've been messing around with this <laughs> for a couple of days now, but just didn't have time to do a video. So, okay, where are we? Okay, that was simple enough. I hope I explained it well enough. But, um, I will, um, I'll make something with these. I'll probably just use these as they are for the photo. I'll make something nice. And then I'll take another photo of what I made. <clears throat> and that will be on the blog. So, okay, guys. And remember, warm or cool families, light to dark. Alcohol water, about 50-50. Your paper and a stencil so that's about it have a good one everyone i'll see you next time bye